Turn and face that way. Head him like this. What does this look like to everybody? One big what? A screw? Yeah. It's actually from a wine press. The same thing that makes a wine or oil press work is the same thing that makes a printing press work. Instead of pressing grapes into wine or olives into oil, we will press paper into books. And you can see right inside here exactly what I'm talking about. So that's the screw over there. Yeah, right? exactly. That's Same the thing. screw. Same one, Alice? Same exact, exactly right. Yeah, well, matter of fact, you're all going to get a chance to print in a little while. You're going to have to help me out. Now, one of the things that goes along with printing is inking. Now, ink rollers, as we know them, they don't come about until the early 19th century, the early 1800s. So, for over 350 years, this is what printers are using. They're called briars or ink bowls. You put the ink on here, you spread it around, and then, yeah, you put it for each and every member, and you just bet, now, it took a lot of skill because you had to make sure you didn't miss a single letter. And remember, the printer is doing this many times per hour, all day long, actually for each and every page they have to do this. So what's going to happen to the letter on here after a few weeks? It gets ripped, it's torn, it gets worn out. It has to be replaced. Whose job was it to replace it? The apprentice, that's right. He had to do all the dirty work in the shop. And according to Benjamin Franklin, when he was a printer's apprentice, this was the worst job in the print shop. And not taking the leather off or putting it on. Because if you know anything about leather, new leather, you know what new leather feels like? What does a new baseball glove feel like when you first get it? It can't move it. It's hard. It's stiff, right? Exactly. Well, today it's no problem. You want to soften up leather. And, and I'll tell you, what printers were using back then was the cheapest form of leather. Skin. Yeah. Actually, yeah. Animal hide. Right, animal hide. It's, it's, it's what it is. It's what leather is. It's from animal hide. This is, uh, this is actually raw hide, which is the same thing we use in uh, dog chew toys today. Now, as you said, yeah, today if you want to soften up leather, you get go down to the hardware store, right? Buy some oil or maybe the sporting goods store if it's for a baseball glove. But today you go to a hardware store and you buy the chemicals that you would need or supplies that you need to soften it up. Well, 250 years ago, they couldn't go down to the hardware store, a sporting goods store, to buy, you know, the, the oil for it. So instead they took the leather and they would dip it into a nice, natural, organic softener. You know what it was? I'll give you a hint. Listen carefully. It comes out of a cow and it's not milk. No. And you can say it in front of me. It's okay. So it comes out of a cow. It's not milk. And you can say it in front of me. Poop. The other one. Manure. That's right. Well, that's For those of us a little more mature, we call it cow urine. But you're right, cow pee. Now, you may laugh and giggle, but wait. Don't we spread cow manure on fields to make it fertilized? To make things grow? Yeah, and some people use uh, what they call dung to, uh, as fuel in other places in the world on a fire. You know, we laugh, but it, it works, right? It may smell, you know, like it, but it, it works. Well, cow urine had very high concentrations of uric acid, which could soften the leather. Now, what did that mean the apprentice had to do? Well, he had to take his bucket and find the cow, put the leather, put the bucket underneath the cow, wait for the cow to do his or her thing, then put the leather in there, leave it in overnight, and then the next day take it out and rinse it out by hand. By hand? Yeah. I know, you didn't want to hear that before lunch. Right. Now, I was talking about ink before. Now, ink existed. Remember the scribes? So they had ink, but that was water-based ink. It doesn't go well on metal letters. So Gutenberg's trying to find a better kind of ink. Well, painters are using oil-based paint. Why not oil-based ink? So he mixes up two ingredients, blue, and, I'm sorry, oil, blue seed oil, and then black stuff from our chimneys, not the charcoal, not the ashes, but the soot. Yeah, the soot. soot, black. soot. You know, it's it's yeah, it's like the black residue, the black stuff that's left over after a fire. Take the soot. It's the ashes. No, it's uh, not the like ashes. The soot more, is kind of what goes on the, um, with the fire or the smoke leaves on the bricks. Kind of, matter of fact, look at this. So is that not fuse? No, it's, that's cold, but you don't want to get your hands on it or fingers. <coughs> you have to wash it off, that's what you have. And it's very, very hard. No, I mean, it's going to take a while to come off. Anyway, I'm going to put some of this right here. Now, 
I'm going to cheat. I'm going to use a little 19th and 20th century technology on 15th century technology. Let's not call it this. Exactly 42 lines long. And can any of you tell which language this was printed in? Yes, absolutely correct. Very good. Most of the time I show this to most kids your age. What, what, how, what grade are you? Eight. 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 Yep. Wow. Eight years old. I show this to Third fifth grade, eight years old. Believe me, I'll show this to fifth graders, sixth graders. They'll say, uh, is that Spanish? Is that Hebrew? Is that Arabic? Is that Chinese? Uh, Actually, some people will make some people. No, no. Actually, some people will make the mistake and say German, but that's understandable. You know why? It's old German style letters, but in Latin. Yeah, that's I, no, no people. No, most people make the mistake and say that. I understand if they say German, but I hear people Hebrew. Like, what? No, not definitely not. No, Latin. It's Latin. Yeah. Now notice something, it was printed on blank paper, every page was 42 lines long. And notice there's a space there. Well, there's a reason, yes, for a picture. Because when they were finished painting these, uh, excuse me, printing these, they go to somebody who's called the illuminator, who would illuminate or illustrate each and, or draw on each and every page of the Bible. Now usually the first page of each book of the Bible, they would make, they'd make a really fancy drawing or elaborate drawing like this. Notice the blank space is for the P. This is Palomos Solomos, the parables of Solomon. Now the other pages they've just touched up a little bit, you know, little dibs and dabs here and there. What we like here we do is, okay, since we got two families, one page will go to one family, and then we'll do another page for the. And you can make the picture at home, Marisa. Yeah, that's. 